I'm not sure just where this uh, memory came came from, why it came back all of a sudden, but I thought I'd share it with you. It's a little difficult though, so let me let me share it nonetheless. I uh, was and to a degree and still am a little bit an antique dealer here in Japan, and uh, one of my specialties when I was doing this full time was uh, antique photos, and I would uh, acquire antique photos, purchase them at uh, flea markets and auctions antique stores or wherever I could find them and collect them. I have a huge, massive collection of these things now, and only a fraction of them are actually on the internet. Fascinating images. I remember one day I came back from an auction and I had bought a, a nice box of photos and in it I found a package of postcards. And these were postcards from World War II. And they were cartoons. They illustrated the soldiers Japanese soldiers in China, in fact, and uh, the detail of their life, showing how they were living. And it was kind of humorous, uh, and for the most part, but some of it had a rather bitter humor. And uh, I asked my wife to help me to understand what most of them were saying. And uh, I remember most of them were just, you know, silly little nonsense, you know, you know, you know this is what we're doing, you know, lots of, lots of very cold here in China, you know, you know, what, what not. But I remember one, one particular, uh, card that, that's really, you know, stuck me, struck me, and uh, stuck in my head, but I, I had just, almost just remembered it just now, and that was, there was several soldiers, and uh, they were reading their mail from home, and I believe that the one soldier had a, a letter from his father, and the caption read that the soldier was thinking or saying, Father, I will try to live up to your expectation. Basically, you know, I'll try to honor what you're expecting me to do and uh, follow your wishes, Father. And I asked Yumiko about it, and she explained that uh, uh, the father had told the son before he went off to war that he was he expected his son to return to Japan and return to his home dead. That's right. He said to come home dead. Now, I have a, enough experience with, uh, I'm not an expert on the war or on the mentality of the Japanese people during the time of war or on uh, death or anything like that at all, but I do know that I've seen uh, uh, shows on Japan, with, in, in Japanese television and the like, where, uh, for example, the family's during wartime and the family learns that uh, their son has died and there's almost a sense of uh, relief in a way that they've done their part, they've done their duty, for them, given given their sacrifice for the country. You know, in, in, in losing their son, they can hang, they can they can be proud of their family's contribution to the war effort by the loss of a son. Excuse me, the allergies are getting. And uh, so. If that mentality was indeed the case, uh, then it would certainly makes sense that uh, a father might expect his son to go away to war and uh, do his family proud by returning in a box, or actually returning cremated. I have, amidst my pictures, my photo archive, I have a, a particularly interesting set of fold photos where it shows uh, mass cremations of Japanese soldiers that died in the field, so they would, uh, the soldiers would uh, lay the corpses out on a funeral pyre, burn the bodies, and then the one picture I have is shows the uh, soldiers picking through the ashes looking for those select bones to uh, ship home to the family. I, I think that's what they were going to do, should put them in a box and ship them home with some ashes to the family. A whole group of bodies burned on the, on the ground like a riverbed, and then the soldiers picking through the ashes. So I guess it wasn't a matter of going home in a, in your corpse in a box, but going your ashes really home in a box. And, uh, the honor of your family having contributed such. I think I know why this thought came to my mind. I was passing a shrine just a moment ago, a small, tiny village shrine, and they had this massive old monument. I couldn't figure out why this disproportionately sized monument was in this little tiny shrine. And I don't know, I didn't stop to take a look at it. Then I couldn't read it anyway. But I, I was thinking, oh, maybe that's a war monument. Maybe the family got together and the families of the village got together and uh, set up this war monument for the, those, those uh, soldiers who died in the war. Perhaps that's it. That's what holds this whole chain of thoughts. 
Somewhere I've got that postcard somewhere. I'm going to dig that up and look at that one of these days. Well, there you go. That's, uh, I, again, I'm not speaking as any expert here. These are just uh, some, some information that came to me via my, my wife. Some reading and some collecting of our, uh, of our paraphernalia. Take care, everybody. Have a great, have a great day. Excuse me, the hiccups.